I welcome everyone to our Bible study. Thank God for those who have been coming consistently. And in this new year, we're beginning afresh of the Lord. And I pray that the study of the word will lift everyone up and make us more victorious in our Christian lives in Jesus' name. That this year will be a higher time, a greater time for everyone. And then don't forget to bring other people. Don't just come alone. Make it your duty. Make it your real assignment this year that while you are coming to the Monday Bible study, to the Thursday meeting, and to the Sunday uh, fellowship, that you come with other people. Make deliberate effort. And the Lord will bless you for that in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for our gathering together. Thank you, Lord, because of the word, the entrance of your word brings light. I will pray, Lord, you enlighten everyone as we study tonight in Jesus' name. Bless us and use us to be instruments of blessing for all the people around us too. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to James chapter 1. And we're coming to the second study today. James chapter 1, we're reading from verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Then in verse 3, it tells us, knowing this, that the trying of your faith walketh patience. In verse 4, and but let patience have a perfect work that she may be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. We look at these verses, it talks about something common, something that happens to everyone. Actually, even sinners have temptation, otherwise, they'll not be called sinners, otherwise, they'll not commit sin because temptation comes before sinning. And so, sinners have temptation, believers too, because it says, beloved brethren, it's writing to the brethren, to those who are saved, sick people also have temptation, and sanctified people have temptations, even those who are filled, immersed, and baptized in the Holy Ghost, and they have the power of the Holy Ghost in their lives, they have temptations to members of the body of Christ, members of the church, we have temptation, ministers and pastors, we have temptation to even apostles, apostles too, they have temptation, what are we talking about, even the Lord Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation and the apostle of our profession and the very son of God, he had temptation, he had trial, he had troubles too, and yet he shows us the way, he gives us the pattern how we can be overcomers and how we can be triumphant. That's why we're looking at the study tonight on the triumph of faith over temptations and trials. There are temptations, solicitations of the devil to lure us, to entice us into doing evil, into sinning against God. There are trials too. The trials are the troubles we have. They are not necessarily temptations to lure us, entice us into sin. They are the pressures upon our life, the persecutions we have, the trials we have, the tribulations we have here on the earth. And yet, there is the possibility in fact, there's the provision that we can be triumphant, we can be overcomers. That's why we're talking about the triumph of faith. It's the faith we have in the Lord that makes us to triumph. We see the faithfulness of God, we see the promises of God, and we see that He says it will keep us from falling, relying on those promises of God, depending on those promises of God, taking the benefit of the promises of God, then we have the victory and we triumph and we're more than conquerors through him that loved us, the triumph of faith over temptations and 
trials, temptations of the young and temptation of middle age, temptation of the single and temptation of the married, temptation of parents and temptation of children and temptations of professionals, whatever the temptation, in whichever place we find ourselves in the day, in the night, in the morning, during the holidays and festivities, temptations, everything in this world has its temptation, its trouble and its trial and yet we rejoice in the fact that he who made the people that came before us went before us to succeed that same God who says I am God I change not that same Christ the same yesterday today and forever he made them overcome he'll make you overcome and he'll make you triumphant in Jesus name the triumph of faith over temptations and trials. There are three things we're looking at as we study those verses. Number one, proper perception in times of temptation. We need to understand, we need to have the proper perception, how it applies to you in particular. We're not trying to, you know, get the proper perception so as to know how to counsel others, how to teach others, how to help others. Charity begins at all and the best home is your temple, is your body, is your personal life. And you want to know how to have the victory in your personal life. But you must have the proper perception in times of your own temptation. Number two, profitable patience. Actually, the patience we read of in uh, that uh, verse uh, 3 there is talking about perseverance, that we persevere, that we say the wind may blow, the storm may come, the temptation may arise, but you stand firm and you persevere. And that patience and that perseverance is profitable profitable for a victory, profitable for a triumph, and profitable for getting to heaven. Because if we always fall every time temptation comes, if we always uh, fall flat on our faces when trials come, how do we get to heaven? The profit of being triumphant and the profit of sailing through victoriously is that eventually we get to heaven number two, profitable patience for triumph over trials. Number three, prevailing prayer. Prevailing prayer. Now, a just study alone will not bring total victory. Just reading the Bible alone will not bring complete victory. If you don't ever have time to pray, trials come, no prayer. Temptations come, no prayer. Tribulations come, no prayer. It will be very difficult for you, for anyone that is prayerless to have the victory over all the temptations and the trials and tribulations that come upon our lives. The prayerless and the powerless. Those are the people, they cannot wait upon the Lord and they cannot seek the face of the Lord and get strength from the Lord. If we are prayerless, we will not prevail. Jacob prevailed when he prayed unto the Lord with importunity, I will not let you go until except you bless me this trial. I will not let you go except you give me the strength and the power and the insight to overcome this revelation. All the things that come after me and come upon me. It is when you pray and you say what I need, the power I need what I need, the strength I need, what I need, the overcoming power that I need for today and for every time to be overcomer, I want it, I must have it. It is that, that prayer, that prevailing prayer, that persevering prayer, that unfortunate prayer that makes us triumphant over tribulations. We're looking at number one. Number one is proper perception in times of temptation. Proper 
perception in times of temptation we're looking at james chapter one i'm reading here from verse two my brethren is talking to us who are born again my brethren is talking to us who are converted who are consecrated and committed to the lord my brethren is talking about people like him he says i'm a brother to the lord jesus christ i'm a member of the body of christ and all the scattered people all over i'm just like you you are saved i'm saved are you sanctified i'm sanctified are you filled with the holy ghost i'm filled with the holy ghost are you committed wholeheartedly unto the lord you're just like me i'm just like you my brethren count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations when ye fall into different kinds of uh, of, uh, of uh, temptations into you know different levels of temptation uh, we need to learn a lesson there because most of the time when trials come we cry when trials come we weep when trials come we're sorrowful why me oh me how can this be happening to me we have not learned the first alphabet of the word of the kingdom it says count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations not when you fall and you are falling but when you encounter all those different kinds of trials and temptations whatever the temptation of course is like an arrow it gets to you sometimes gets to your heart and gets to your mind and yet you need to rejoice to say this is happening to me because i'm a brother in christ because i'm a sister in christ this is happening to me because i'm a child of god this is happening to me because i know the lord you look at your trial you look at your temptation and say if i were not a christian they will not do that to me so i'm a christian if i were not a conqueror that will not come to me so i'm a conqueror and if my name were not in the book of life in heaven satan will not be making so much effort to strike at me and so i rejoice i don't rejoice because satan is active i'm not rejoicing because the tempters are active i'm rejoicing because what they do assures me i'm a child of god and that joy of being a child of god overwhelms me my brethren count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations we're looking at proper perception in times of temptation three things we're looking at number one number one personal recognition of diverse temptations of believers number two prompt resistance of devious tempters at the beginning number three practical repentance of deadening temptations with brokenness look at number one number one is personal recognition of diverse temptations of believers now if temptation comes to you and you don't recognize you don't recognize this is temptation are you going to resist are you going to place it in the right pigeonhole and say this one is not for fun this one is not entertainment this one is not you know people trying to get my attention this is temptation and it is when you recognize that when you realize that personally in your life you have this personal recognition of the diverse temptations of believers that's when you overcome you will overcome in first peter chapter one reading from verse six first peter chapter one verse six wherein ye greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations it looks like those christians in the early church they were not uh, just superficial christians they were not no so so christians they were real christians look at what the apostle is saying is saying 
wherein ye greatly rejoice. You greatly eh, rejoice. How is it that, you know, Christians today, Pentecostal Christians, Evangelical Christians, and Latter day Christians, any little water of the pond that splashes on them, they begin to cry. They begin to fast and pray. Any little frown of anybody, eh, they begin to cry. Eh, what's happening to me? Why should this happen to me? Any little slander, any little thing that people do against them, they say, me of all people, why should they do this to me? And their joy is gone. It says, for those believers who are there then, and for the believers who are living in the end of time, it says, wherein ye greatly rejoice, don't now, for a season. It's all for a season. It's all for this period. The temptation will not be forever. The temptation will not be for, you know, a lifetime. It says, don't now. <clears throat> don't now for a season, for a period, if need be, here in heaviness. Heaviness, that's heavy weight of temptation. Heavy load of temptation. This thing is heavy. This one is almost crushing. All the same, he greatly rejoice because it comes through manifold temptations. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says that the trial of your faith. Okay, that's, that, that's why that thing came. We're in the faith. We're living in the faith. We're growing in faith. We're progressing in the faith. And Satan does not like people having faith in God, implicit faith in God, total faith in God. Because of that, he sends his cohorts. He sends his people that he'll bring that temptation. It says the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold. It says gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire. It says, uh, you know, sometimes the temptation, the trial is like fire burning. And have you ever seen people who rejoice when they're in the fire? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because the Lord Jesus Christ Emmanuel was them. And whatever the temptation, whatever the trial, whatever the difficulty or the trouble, they can rejoice in the Lord. It says it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Then in verse 8, it says in verse 8, whom having not seen, ye love. Okay, so this one is talking about believers like us, because Peter saw the Lord, and James saw the Lord, and John and John of them, all those twelve, they saw the Lord, but these are people now like you. You have not seen the Lord in the physical, and yet you know, he saved my soul. I know he's real. I know he's there. I know he lives and he ever lives. Though we have not seen him, yet we love him. In whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. This year will be a year of joy. When the rain is falling, you'll have joy. When there's no rain but sun is shining, you will have joy. When people smile at you, you will have joy. I lost a good amen. amen. And when people frown at you, you know, in the past years, you couldn't bear the fury of Nebuchadnezzar, the frown of unbelievers because they don't agree with the way you are living for God and you are committed to God and you are doing everything you ought to do and anytime you are coming to show that they are not happy they are not happy you are a Christian they are not happy you are a believer they frown at you and they are furious and then you lose your joy in the past in the past but today will keep that joy you will keep your joy. It says, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of 
glory. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and I'm reading from verse 12. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, wherefore let him that thinketh and standeth take heed, lest he fall. It says, because temptations come, don't just walk blindly and then overconfident, self confident, as if there's no problem, there's no problem, whatever. If I fall, I will rise. Don't live a careless life like that. It says, Whosoever thinks he stands, let him, let, let him take heed, let's say fall. In verse 13, it says, There has, there has no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. That's the first thing to, to, to think about. That's the personal thing you think about every time temptation comes. There are other people on earth. This one is coming to you. have trouble, maybe in your marriage, and the husband is, you know, talking like this, talking like that. You don't go into a corner and then say, I don't think I will be going to a Sunday fellowship. I don't think I'll be going to church. Because look at my, the way my husband is talking. It happens to other wives, other places too. It's not something peculiar, something so special. And look at the way they're treating me. It happens to other people too. And many of those people, they overlook those things. They don't allow all those things to overwhelm them. Will the rest of the people be stronger than you are? It happens to, you know, even teenagers and they overcome their, their kind of classmates and their colleagues and everything just like them. They call them names too. They make fun of them too. They poke at them too. And yet they overcome and they still continue their studies they don't say i will not go to school because at the play field this is what they said against me if those young people are able to overcome i can overcome i can overcome because there's no temptation taking you such but such as is common to man but god is faithful who will not suffer you permit you, allow you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with this, will, will the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. You'll be able. You'll overcome. You'll have the victory. And you will not be falling every time and cringing every time and fearful every time and backsliding every time. You know, there are, they call themselves Christians on Sunday, they are charged in the church. On Monday, maybe they are charged in the church. By Tuesday, they go back to those same situations and what they were charged about and the excitement they had on Sunday or Monday or maybe Thursday as they go back to the office and go back to their community during the week they fall again and then they come back their battery is always going down their battery is always uh, losing its power but for us who understand that the lord stands by us and he stands with us in every temptation we overcome in jesus name he makes a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Then in verse 14, it says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. We're looking at First Timothy chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 9. It says, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. These are temptations that people attract to themselves that people invite to themselves. They have something in their heart and they have, uh, you know, this uh, lust and this desire and this covetousness to have to get rich by all means and because of that, because of what they are pursuing and they cannot let go, because of that they fall into a snare and temptation and into many foolish and hurtful lost desires which drown men in destruction and perdition. It's not only money, anything you are looking for in the world 
and you want heat from the world and you, you want these people of the world or even Christians to give you by all means and you are passionate for it. It's not the kingdom of God. It's not the gift of God. It's not the grace of God. It's not what God gives by himself. But you want that thing by all means, whatever it is, it gets you into temptation. It gets you into compromise because I want that thing. And that man is the only one that can give me. And so whatever condition he gives and whatever I have to do, I want it from him. You will compromise. You want something from a woman, any woman. And you say, she's the only one that can give me. And I want it by all means. And I want her to say yes when I ask her for this. You are going to fall into temptation because you are so passionate. You are not passionate for heaven. You are not passionate for righteousness. You are not passionate for holiness. You are passionate I must have this and if she is you know delaying and of course the people of the world they know when you really really hungry for something passionate for something and you want that thing by all means and they will use it to bring temptation to you but when you hold everything with a loose hand if it comes praise the Lord if it doesn't come praise the Lord you will not fall into any temptation Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. We are coming to number two here. Number two, we're looking at a prompt resistance of devious tempters at the beginning. Very important. At the beginning, if you see a little snake just coming to earth like a worm, at that beginning, you can crush that thing. You can put your, your boot on that thing, you crush it, and it's gone. But if you don't resist it and kill it at the very beginning, the thing begins to grow, continues to grow. That thing can turn to become a very dangerous, poisonous viper that can take your life. It's at the beginning of the temptation. Don't nurse the temptation. Don't wait for it to grow. And don't, uh, you know, I'm studying the temptation. And don't get interested in the temptation at the right time, at the first time. When that temptation comes, that the, thing, the time to kill that temptation. We're looking at 1 Peter chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 8. In 1 Peter chapter 5, we're looking at verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, that the tempter, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Who are the people he's going to devour? The people who are not sober. The people who are not vigilant. The frivolous. The careless. The carnal. The gambler. The gambler. They gamble for their lives. They're not serious about anything. You know, uh, you cannot be a, 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 a jester and then be an overcomer and you cannot be a superficial or serious person and overcome as the temptations are coming as the tempters and the temptresses are coming now the temptresses uh, you know every time we think of adultery fornication yes that's that's terrible but there are there are people that just want to gamble with your life or with your conviction and if you are the frivolous type if you are the superficial type, it will even take you by surprise. You are falling before you realize you are falling. But if you are sober, if you are vigilant, if you are observant, if you know you have your soul to keep and you have your life to keep and every time you are watchful, that's the time we overcome. And when the beginning of that thing comes and a frivolous fellow, careless fellow gambler, he wants to gamble with your eternal life, comes into your life and is, you know, wanting to have an hero it's at that beginning you say no it cannot be i'm not like